In Chinese Kung Fu, we learn how to use bare hands, bare feet, and our human body to exploit and strike weak points in other human beings. In this video, I wanna show you guys various weak points that the Kung Fu master always strives to know about in their opponent. So no matter how big or how small you are, you have the ability to hit the weak and vulnerable spots in the human body. It would greatly help to have a training partner that you can use that's willing to help you become a better martial artist. So in this video, we want to talk about a few key areas. Number one, the temple. And I define the temple as the area that's equidistant from the corner of the eye to the ear. Everybody's got one, and it's the soft spot right in between the ear and the eye. We also want to talk about the throat, the neck, approximately where the Adam's apple is. If you hit to the Adam's apple, you can't go wrong. That's our second weak spot. Our third weak spot is right where his Chinese character, which means wind. Wind. We're going to hit the wind out of him by hitting the solar plexus. Solar plexus is our third point. Our fourth point has two locations. One is the ribs on this side. One is the ribs on this side. In the comments below, I want to see if you guys know which side is the liver. The fifth weak spot is the groin, which is why the groin is usually an illegal target in most martial arts but Chinese Kung Fu is not looking to have rules, therefore the groin is fair game. And the sixth spot is the knee. We have left knee or we have right knee and we're gonna show you two different ways to hit it. We have many, 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 many videos on my YouTube channel. If you guys subscribe to the channel that will show you different Kung Fu self-defense techniques in order to penetrate his defenses and get to these weak points. So in this video, I wanna just go over some different hand positions and foot positions and angles of attack that we can use to hit these weak points. Number one, for the temple, we can use fist. The fist, of course, is the classic human being weapon. I think mostly because movies have depicted most people fighting with their fists. In the martial arts, traditional martial arts, especially Chinese Gong Fu, we wanna focus on the fist right here. Can you guys see how my index and middle knuckle are most prominent? And my ring and pinky are least prominent? Okay, doing iron bone conditioning, doing iron fist training, will develop a lot of strength, bone strength, wrist positioning, and muscle strength in the hand, the wrist, and the arm to enable you to hit effectively with those two knuckles. So those two knuckles not only are stronger than the other two knuckles, but they're also the perfect size to be striking to the temple. So using some of the self-defense techniques from other videos that you've seen on our YouTube channel, I want you to parry through his defenses and hit with those two knuckles to the temple. But if you cannot do that, open hand, the art of karate, will also be helpful for hitting to the temple. Coming in with open hand chops with the palm up, forehand style, or coming at him with a backhand style chop with the palm down are both applicable for the temple strike. I think it's very important when training these weak spots and different hand positions, it's very important to get close to your opponent and actually make contact without critically injuring them because it'll get you used to timing and distance, which is very important for landing your attacks, especially in traditional martial arts. So for this first weak spot, we have fist to the temple, we have hook punch to the temple, we can do a back fist to the temple, we also have palm up chop to the temple, and we have palm down chop to the temple. These are all areas that we can use to strike to the temple. Our second weak spot for this video is the neck, the Adam's apple. The human body has 12 different meridians that are inhabited by over 800 different pressure points. And so there are many different pressure points in and around the neck, but in this video we're just focused on the neck as a region. And so for me as a martial artist, when I'm opening his defenses up and going in for my attack, I have again two hand positions for attacking the neck. Number one is a straight punch. I'm trying to hit somewhere in the neck with a vertical fist, a reverse fist, or a horizontal fist. Either one is fine. And for the next strike, it doesn't really matter which part of my fist makes contact, just as long as I make contact. So vertical, reverse, horizontal. And if I'm going to the neck, to the sides of the neck, or to the front of the neck, I can use backhand chop, I can use forehand chop, I can use backhand chop, I can use forehand chop, or I can use chop to the Adam's apple, or chop to the Adam's apple. So all of these hand positions are applicable when hitting to the neck. I love t-shirts that have logos on them, like Jokum's Wind t-shirt here. 
You can get this shirt off jakemace.com. But they're great because they give us a target to strike to. And so in this case, I have many different weapons at my disposal that I can use to strike to his solar plexus, which is RN17, in between the nipples on the center of the body. Number one, if I'm very close in range, I have the elbow. I can have a backhand elbow like this, or I can have an over-the-top elbow like this. I can also hit to the solar plexus with a simple straight punch coming in with the fist or a jab punch coming in from the front hand. Either of those punches is also very effective and I am focused on using my first two knuckles for the punch of the solar plexus. Next, if I'm a little bit further away and I have a hook or control of either his shoulders or neck, I can use that to my advantage for kneeing into the solar plexus, which is a very powerful method of striking. They've shown in some studies that I've read that kneeing while pulling your opponent in actually generates far more pounds per square inch of force than kicks do. One of my favorite techniques to go to the solar plexus is the spinning side kick. So when I look at my target and I whip it around, hitting to the solar plexus with my foot is my next area that I use to attack. If I'm further away, jumping distance, I can also use a jumping side kick coming in and side kicking to the solar plexus with my normal side kick. And if I'm very close and I have no other weapons at my disposal, a good headbutt to the solar plexus is always a surprising technique and works very effectively because the top of your head is very strong. Our next area to strike to are the ribs. And with the ribs, I use a few different weapons. Back fists are so effective when striking to the ribs. Back fist this way or back fist this way. Ridge hand comes into play when going to the ribs. Ridge handing this way and also ridge handing this way. Chops can still work, backhand style chop, backhand style chop, or forehand style chop, or forehand style chop. Also, hook kicks can work to the ribs because they're low and they're easy to hit. And for those of you who are not flexible, the ribs is a great spot to aim your kick because it's lower than the head. We can also use our spinning side kick because we can also hit to the ribs when we spin and go into that side kick. So the ribs are a weak spot. We're focused on LR13 pressure point, liver 13. But don't worry about pressure points yet. Just worry about, about a softball size circle on each rib cage. That's your focus when hitting to the ribs. Next is the hitting to the groin. And of all weak spots in the human body to hit to, the groin is my favorite because it's an easy one to hit. And if you guys want to see an excellent video that Joachim and I put together on the top 10 groin strikes from Kung Fu, you can click on this video right here and you can see Joachim work very hard letting me hit him in the groin about 10 times. But when I'm attacking to the groin, I often use kicks, my primary weapon of choice. So when I snap kick, the front kick is my primary tool for hitting to the target of the groin. I can use the ball of my foot, I can use the flat of my foot, or I could even be turned away and use a heel kick that comes underneath the groin. In addition to that, I can sink my stance down, get behind him, and take a ridge hand in an upward motion coming into the groin. So both hands and feet from different angles are very effective against the groin. And the knees are probably the easiest of all the weak spots to hit because the goal of the knee is to be a drunken master. And a drunken master is not about being sloppy when fighting. It's about making your opponent think you're going to go one place, but in reality you go to a different place. So when I'm fighting Joachim for real, I make him feel as if I'm going to go to the head. I'm going to make him do things in his arms and then I'm going to surprise him with that knee attack as a secondary attack, but it was actually my primary attack that was set up by my hands. When attacking to the knee, I only use two different kinds of kicks. Number one is a side kick, and you can go from a front attack, which if he turns away, will collapse the knee and allow him to live another day with a healthy knee, but he will go down. If he does not turn around like that, I can go from the front and buckle the knee backwards and lock it back, and that could be a career-ending injury. There's also two other ways to attack the knee. One is to immobilize or post up top as you hook the knee from the back, and then use something like his chin or jaw to create leverage down to the floor. And you can also do that same kind of hooking technique from the inside. Hook from the inside and then push over that leg and cause a takedown. So let's recap. The knee has a collapsing technique. The knee has a career ending technique. The knee has a outside hooking technique and then use the chin as leverage. The knee also has an inside hooking technique and also use the chin as leverage. 
If you guys work this month on those weak spots of the human body, you get a partner who's willing to help you try every one of these hand and foot positions, every one of these angles of attack, and if you are comfortable with hitting to these areas in a time of real threat and real distress when your life is threatened only, because Kung Fu is for self-defense only, and self-defense does not come along except maybe once in a lifetime, then you will be very, very good at defending yourself. Thanks for watching this video. Please hit the like button for us, subscribe to our channel, and share this video with everybody you know who's into the martial arts. Check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And check out my online school and Joachim's wind shirt at jakemace.com.